Hi, everybody, and welcome to episode 114 of the IROC Knits podcast. My name is Corey Eichelberger, and welcome. I'm so glad you're here. It is a bitterly cold day out day outside today. It's zero degrees right now. I have not poked my, my head out the door. I've been getting ready for the podcast all morning. It is Monday afternoon. We, we got back from Arizona yesterday. Um, and of course had two suitcases full of dirty clothes and you know shoes and bathroom bags and everything to put away tons of laundry and we had a week's worth of mail to catch up on so it was kind of um, just frenetic <laughs> last night and so this morning I got up and made my plans for the podcast and now finally I'm getting around to uh, actually recording. I do have some really sad news to share with everyone. I've been kind of I think putting off doing starting the recording too because my dear chocolate labradoodle Cody passed away on Saturday the 21st of January. Um, he had uh, gone really quickly downhill on Thursday evening. Um, he just seemed a little disoriented. He had been to the vet on Wednesday and um, because he had had a little bleeding um, from his rectum but she said that is because the tumor had spread to both sides and that he was probably straining to go to the bathroom. And, you know, we didn't do an x-ray or anything, but it was the type of cancer that was going to spread um, to liver, kidneys, and lungs. And But he was a happy boy. I'd taken him to the dog park. I'd shown you guys pictures of him in the snow. He had run with my husband on Wednesday morning and then left on Thursday to go to Seattle. And I just felt like he was a little off on Thursday. And then on Friday, I knew I, he had just... He had no energy. He seemed really kind of out of it. Um, he didn't eat. He had he did not eat supper on Thursday night. I mean, he's been a little more finicky with his food, but he's always finished it. It's just taken him a little bit longer. Um, and Ross was out of town, and I didn't want to not wait. And I wanted Minnesota Pets to come to the house, and so they came on Saturday morning at 10 a.m., and Ross got home at 1 a.m. on Friday night and got to spend some time with Cody. Um, he seemed comfortable to me. He just was just laying most of the time. He he hadn't eaten and he would go outside and he would go to the bathroom for me, but he would just eat snow. He just was eating and eating the snow outside. And um, but that was it. I had to kind of help him um, back into the house up the stairs. He has he had had bad hips for a long time. And um, Minnesota Pets is just so compassionate. The vet came, um, she was very quiet and gentle with us. I cried for an hour, um, but I, um, she said she'll give us as much time as we needed. And I said, I had all day yesterday, I'm very ready. Um, I just waited for my husband to get home last night and I sat on the floor with Cody all day and talked to him. And um, we both just cried and the vet was just very kind, uh, sedation, and then they just gave him a drug and he just slept. And he never really lifted his head too much. He just, you know, he knew we were there, I think. Um, she said for sure once the sedation happens that they feel like they can hear you. I hope so because I just talked him right into heaven. <laughs> um, I do believe that dogs go to heaven uh, because <laughs> life in heaven would be better with them <laughs> for all of us. Um, so... When he left on the stretcher, um, they put a blanket over him and a blanket under his head for a pillow and Ross helped her and I howled. I just, I just, oh, I didn't know it was in me. I was very, very distraught for just a little while. Um, and then we needed to kind of get ready to travel on Sunday 
And so that was probably good because, you know, we had things to do, we had to pack, and we had to clean up all of Cody's things because we didn't want to come home to them. So we got all the treats and the leashes and the dog bowl and his beds and his blankets and we washed them. We put everything away in the basement so that when we came home, we didn't have to deal with that. Um, so I don't mean to start the podcast on a really low note. Um, honestly, I'm just so thankful for the life I had with him. Um, I do think I will ask God um, when I get to heaven or the pearly gates or when we can have a conversation um, why dogs have to have such a short life um, because it's just they he gave me so much joy and I was never a dog person if you're not a dog person and you get a dog for your child and your dog attaches itself to you because your child is gone all the time and you are the one at home feeding it he just loved me wholeheartedly every single day, whether I was gone from his sight for three minutes or 24 hours, he would run down this hallway to my recliner and greet me like, mom, you're here every single time. And I wish I had taken a hundred videos of that because it would make a really fun video of him running in every single time. Um, but I have that memory. So if you have a a dog or cat or and we have a you know previous dog that had already passed away so you know send them to meet Cody at the dog park in the sky um, I don't want to be too much of a downer but my heart is broken um, Ross and I will definitely get another dog we talked about it a lot on vacation I don't want a puppy I want a trained dog I want a I want, I'll have, take a puppy that's been trained, but I don't want to do puppies again. I trained our last two dogs and then um, I didn't do a very good job. I'm just too soft. And um, so then we sent Cody for a couple weeks of training um, to a hunting place out here by us. It's called Wings and Whistles if you're in Minnesota. Um, and we didn't want him to be a hunting dog, but we wanted him to be a well-behaved house dog. And that made all the difference. I needed training. <laughs> <laughs> and um and Cody was just very easy to train but um he went out there and then then he could heal and walk on leash and right now I can't handle a dog that can't walk on leash with my shoulder um so I would like a dog a puppy that has been sent for some training before before it comes to my house I think although that can be very expensive so I'll have to see what's going on with that anyway um, I also want to send out big hugs to my dear friend, Renee, Knit Traverted, who some of you know, she has traveled with me to events before. She's in my local knitting group and her father passed away last week and the funeral was this morning. So I did um, watch that um, on Facebook Live um, through a church organization in her hometown of Walnut Grove, Minnesota. Um, that was another reason that I'm not recording until later in the afternoon because I did. That was at 11 a.m. And it would have been maybe a three hour, two and a half to three hour drive for me. I thought about going down for the funeral. I haven't seen her um, in a few weeks. and uh, But we just got home so late and so many things to take care of here. So I was able to watch it online. Um, her brother spoke and one of her sons she has twin boys um, who were in the same grade as my daughter, Kylie. They went to school together. So um, I just want to send big hugs out to her as well. Um, and then um, Tammy, Knit Freak 48, you need to get in touch with your address. You won a prize, not last episode, but the one before. And I haven't heard from you. So I sent you a message on Ravelry mm, a week or so ago before I left my trip and I still haven't heard from you. So if anyone knows Tammy, Knit Freak 48, let her know that she won a prize. I don't have an email. Um, and otherwise I will just re, I will redraw and give it away to someone else because I want to get that out of my house. I have so many prizes right now to organize and keep track of. What am I wearing today? This is my Harmonious Rings Cowl by Sivia Harding. I knit this back in like 2011 maybe, so it's quite old. I love this little poncho cowl. It is a Mobius. You use Kat Vorty's uh, Mobius cast on. 
um, which is a challenge. You make a figure eight with your needles and flip them together and then you cast on in a loop, kind of an infinite loop, and you're knitting kind of out from both sides, accordion style. But the knitting of it was just um, kind of reverse stockinette and then um, rib, I think, if I remember right, or something like that. Yeah, pearl rose and then rib. Um, and then I put these big beads on it. Now it calls for small beads, but this weight of yarn, this is a chunky. I knit it out of Cascade Baby Alpaca Chunky. Uh, the weight of this, and I could get the yarn through the bead holes, really, I think, adds a real super nice pop of color. So, and I'd never worn it on the podcast. I do believe I talked about it on an episode, but I had not worn it. Um, and if I haven't talked about it, well, <laughs> this is it. Uh, it would have been a long time ago, I think, in the H's of shawls and cowls and things. But I thought I would put that on around my shoulders today while I was running around getting <laughs> getting ready this morning. Okay, let's do the sweater of the week this week. This one I finished a little while ago, a few weeks ago. I've worn it a couple of times. I did cut off the bottom and lengthen it after I wore it the first time. Just was hitting me a little short and I did have leftover yarn. This is knitted wit yarn in the autumn rainbow colorway and it is wild. It looks a little dark um, on screen. There is quite a bit of navy and dark purple in it, but it it's it's a bright, brighter piece. Not everyone would knit with Autumn Rainbow. Um, and I used a Knitting Pure and Simple pattern for this. It was um, by Diane Sosi, 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 S-O-U-C-Y. And it's uh, her V-neck, um, bulky V-neck pullover pattern. It is. It calls for a split hem at the bottom and it's a, a little bit longer of a piece. This is just the Knitting Pure and Simple, my copy. I have it, um, I have knit this um, before. The V-neck is real um, small on this and I wanted to keep it that way. It's not very deep, it's, it is a raglan top down. I followed the instructions um, for a 40, size 46 and knit it on a US 9. My gauge was a little bit smaller so it worked out fine for me. It is a 38 to 50 inch um, bust every four inches. Um, so not a huge, doesn't go up super high. Um, it is four stitches to, to the inch. So if you have like an Aran to chunky weight yarn in your stash, it's a great, a great little sweater. I just needed it to be plain and simple, right? <laughs> because it had so much going on in the yarn. I did alternate skeins throughout. I got a tiny bit of flashing there in the middle right here and I did rip back and re-knit some in and I still ended up with a little bit of flashing between those two skeins. You can see just a little bit over here where the flashing is. It just means where there's a section of color that is either lighter or darker um, that kind of happens. But in the, it looks, a, I think a little bit more, um, like I think you can see it more on the camera than you can in real life because I have my lights on and so they're shining on the, <laughs> they're shining off the light parts so it, it isn't quite as noticeable in in real life I do really like it a lot um, it's a nice weight for here in the winter I can still since it's a wool uh, superwash merino I can still wear it indoors with you know heat on and that's a big problem with a big bulky sweater is that you can't wear it indoors when you go somewhere in Minnesota because they crank up the you know the heat and well not it's not super, but you know, sometimes you just can't wear like a big mohair turtleneck because if you're gonna go somewhere and sit somewhere, it's only for outdoor wear, if that makes sense. I have to say, oops, I made a mistake. I have, that's become a new segment for me and I'm not real happy about it, but I, um, last week I shared the Diagonal Kimono by Carol Lappin and I typed it wrong, so I said Carol Pappin and it's L-A-P-I-N, and someone pointed it out, and so I just wanna make sure I get that right, that that diagonal kimono with the stripes and the big collar on it, kind of the jacket, was by Carol Lappin, or Lapin, okay? And then, <laughs> the shawl of the week this week is also a bulky knit, and I love this one as well. I almost wore it, 
And then I looked and I hadn't talked about it on the podcast. So I was like, well, I will put that on the mannequin. So this is just a chunky ribbed knit. It works up so quickly. And I always used to share this in my shawl class because I think a lot of um, tweens, teenagers, young adults, 20 somethings, are really into the chunky knits right now. Like they, they have been for a number of years. Like they really like these big bulky knits. And so it is a perfect gift. If you have a teenager, a tweenager, uh, uh, yeah, 20 something in your life and you've just got some really bulky yarn. So this I bought from Stephen B. It can be done in one color um, or the two color version. And it basically is just cast on and rib and it is like an accordion. It just stretches out. I did have several people when I taught the class put it on as a skirt because this top neckline is super stretchy because it's ribbed and you can pull it up and push it in um, as well. And so that's, this is a bulky, um, what did I knit that out of? This is by Margie Kuiper. It came out in 2009. Gosh, I got a lot of old things. The more you knit, the less often you can wear the things so they don't get worn. Like if you have two sweaters in rotation, by the end of the winter, right, they're going to be worn. I have 50 sweaters. I wear maybe them once a year, twice a year. And so they just don't get worn out. And so I can continue to wear them as long as I don't change size too much. And um, so, yeah, so this is, um, it looks like the pattern is not available online. So if you want the cast on numbers, you can um, email me. I knit this in Cascade Yards Magnum and in Honey Gold Acres Hand Spun Bohemian. So that's a hand spun yarn. So if you're a hand spinner and you have some bulky yarn, that might be kind of fun to use up. I used a size 15 needle and I do have a picture of me wearing it as a skirt. Um, so I will put that in here as well uh, so you could see what it looks like. It's kind of funny that I pulled it on. I, I was obviously teaching in a yarn store. So you can, <laughs> you can see, sorry, I just bumped the table. I was on vacation last week for the whole week in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, I'm going to tell you all about that in the Corey stories, but I knit a lot. I knit on the plane and I knit at the Barrett Jackson car auction. And I knit when my husband was at a conference for three days and I went to two knitting groups while I was there. <laughs> and um, so I have a couple of finished objects that I want to show you today. So the first one I finished is the um, Frost at Dawn cowl. I showed this as a whip last time. I think it turned out so cute. It was in my suitcase, so now it has kind of some little seams, you know, bold marks in it. But this is using a Mountain Colors Twizzle. I had one skein of it. Um, this calls for a little bit more yardage, but as you can see, you are knitting a few rows of pearl, one row of pearl. Uh, then it's supposed to be a few rows of pearl, one row of pearl. I just put two um, rows of purl stitches in between because I think I did the first one wrong. I don't know if I was on the plane or if, it, if I got that far before I left, but I just mimicked it. And then at the bottom, when I was getting close, I just started doing um, that those purl rows so that I could bind off and make that work. So yeah, I think it turned out really cute. This was a free pattern. I highly recommend it. It just kind of squashes down on, on your neck as you wear it. Super easy to throw on. Be really nice under a coat because you'd get that little um, in the front. And then I do think you could pull it up over your ears as kind of a, a hood, you know, and, and still have enough down here to cover your neck in the winter if you were out and about and got cold or you had to shovel off your car like we did when we got home from the airport yesterday. Hoof da. Car, uh, car windshield was full of snow because we parked at a park and ride and we didn't park in the ramp because uh, it was so much cheaper <laughs> and some Ross was out there and he has a hat in the car I have a hat we have mittens we have stuff in the car but we both put our hats on because we didn't take heavy coats with us on the plane <laughs> and then I finished this for my mother 
And this is a Kati Wample Cowl. Um, this pattern was given away on my website for free if you signed up to receive my emails um, for a long time. And now I think you can get either one of two cowls. But this is Belle Angora, Angora, French Angora yarn. So rabbit fur, basically, that is harvested from a rabbit by plucking it off and then spun into yarn. So you have to be you know, willing to put up with the fuzz. I did knit this on one size smaller needle so that it would um, trap some of the fur um, in the stitches so that it wouldn't shed as much. I don't know if it's gonna... Yeah, there's, there's some stuff flying around a little bit. So I can put it outside in the cold and see if that can't, won't calm it down a little bit. I can continue to shake it. Um, but this is for my mom. So I got these two skeins of blue in my advent box. I got the twice sheared sheep advent box and it had mostly stitch markers in it. I did get a project bag and um, some crochet hooks and some cable needles. Um, I got some lovely things, but the first box I opened was this blue and gore yarn and I had three skeins. So this is only 33 yards of yarn. So not a lot of yardage and for a, a you know, the price is not cheap um, because you're only getting a little bit. So I used all three skeins in the middle and the blue at the top and the bottom because my mom loves blue. And as soon as I saw the blue, I'm like, well, I think I have some of that left over. In my nice capade sweater from the Minnesota 52 book, there are snowflakes around the yoke and you can use just cream yarn or you can use yarn with sequins or you can use Angora to make that just soft and you know, more a little more luxury. And so I had this left over from knitting one of those sweaters. And so I thought I should use those three skeins because three skeins really wasn't enough to make too much. But the Cotty Wample cowl is just a two row repeat and one of the rows is knit. And the second row is just a lace in a rhythm. And I put stitch markers in every 12 stitches so that I know that I'm on track the whole time. And I knit this the entire time we were walking around um, everywhere we went. And I have another one on the needles right now um, because it was just easy to do. It was so repetitious that after like the second row of that lace, you really have it down. It's yarn over, knit two together, slip, slip, knit, super simple. Um, so yeah, those are my two uh, finished objects from when we were gone. Uh, it was really hard to pack because I didn't, I knew I would get a lot of knitting done because I was gonna be spending some time by myself. So I called my friend Mary and I said, hey, I'd like to come to your knitting group. And I, I know Mary, um, I met her at ZK the first year and we think that was 2012. Oh. Don't correct me if I'm wrong, um, but she came by herself from Wisconsin to the event. And she told the story to everyone at her knitting group that I welcomed her. And I am that person at a knitting event because I'm an extrovert and I can't understand why anyone would want to sit alone and be quiet. And so if I see someone sitting alone at a, in a knitting retreat or if they're by themselves at a table or they don't seem to have been invited for dinner with a group or whatever, I'll say, come join us. And sometimes they'll be like, no, I'm good, right? But... I think that's the situation where it was with Mary. She came by herself. I ended up sitting down with her. Um, and so we've now known each other for years. We were at ZK for a number of years together. And then um, they lived in Brazil for a little while. And then they retired to Arizona. So they're in the Phoenix Scottsdale area. And the last time I went down pre-pandemic, I had reached out and gone to their knitting group at the library, which was near Old Town. And they were just a lovely group, super welcoming. Not everyone would just let like a random visitor to town come and, you know, sit at their knitting group, especially if you've been together with a group of women for a while and everybody kind of knows each other's stories and their families. It can be awkward to have someone just drop in, right? Especially if someone's going to talk about something that might be a little more personal. This group is just lovely. And she said, oh yeah, we meet in my neighborhood on Tuesday. Um, so I went to this lovely neighborhood gathering room. They have like, 
I and I think this is common in Arizona where they have na large neighborhoods and then they build like a community park and then they have like a like a almost like a rec center but we there was a fireplace and a big tv and couches and so I went on Tuesday it was lovely um but knowing how much knitting I was going to get done is really hard right like how much to take plus we're, we were packing for a full week and I don't we don't go anywhere for seven days right and all those nights right so I need we both needed to bring workout clothes so you have to bring you know and you can wear stuff twice but you know your workout athletic bras and your socks and stuff you know you have to so our suitcases were really full and I have to say my husband <laughs> we have a little handheld scale weigher thing for our suitcases here and he was weighing and when we got to the airport on the way down and on the way back one of the suitcases weighed 50.0 both times both times and on the way back we had a dirty clothes suitcase and a clean clothes in our bathroom bag suitcase and our shoes and he balanced it like perfectly both times the other one was like 44 pounds and so we could have moved some stuff over when we were checking at home but that's pretty good both ways to get 50.0 pounds. And so I brought five projects along, which seems like a lot, but I knew I would probably finish cow number one, finish cow number two, start a cow number three, and that was my walking knitting, the Cotty Wampa Cowls. Um, and I'm gonna show you that. I should have showed this in whips, but I didn't have it here because it's hanging by my purse. So this is the skein of yarn. It is Great Adirondack com Company, um, and it's called Zulu. It's a merino sparkle yarn. And so I cast on another Cotty Wample cowl, and you can see I have all my little stitch markers on. If I were at home, I wouldn't need them, but since I'm walking and I'm moving around, I just wanna be able to check that my, my lace row is always on track. Um, and so it's just super easy for me to carry that with. So I um, I worked on this on Saturday at the car show. I cast it on and got it going. And then I had to borrow um, stitch markers from my friend who came and we didn't have enough. So she gave me a whole bunch of safety pins that she had in her knitting bag. So I used safety pins until I got back to the hotel and then I swapped, swapped that. Oh, here they are. Here are all the safety pins that I had on my little raspberry bag. This reminds me of my mom who loves raspberries, especially black raspberry. Um, but so I have to give those back to my my friend, uh, Susan, who met us down there with her husband. So my husband had someone to go to the car show with. So I didn't have to spend four days at the car show. So that's what I was working on. So then I also brought along my brioche slipover by Mini Mean, Mini Mean Knit Design. And this is just a kind of two pieces of brioche, but you start um, and you work your way down and then you leave it on a needle so that you can decide your length later. And then you pick up, there's Angora on there because um, these were in the bag together. Uh, you pick up at the shoulders and start working down and then you increase till you join in the middle to make that neckline like this. And then I'm gonna pick up around that neckline and put on kind of a thicker um, band. And then I pick up around the armholes. I think it might be a little too wide in the shoulders for me. I'm not super broad shouldered. So I might have been better off casting on a smaller size, but I needed it to fit in the bust. And I have more bust than I do shoulders. So um, it might be okay, but I may pick up my ribbing a little bit in like a row a row in and let that roll under or I may leave it unfinished so I'm ready to join my two pieces in the round and then I'll do brioche in the round it is supposed to be cropped and I was at the point with this where I didn't want to make that decision anymore I wanted to come home try it on with what I'm going to wear it with I think I'll put the neckline on to make sure I know what the fit is like on that I may join in the round and do my sleeves before I decide on the length. And I don't have much to go. And with this chunky yarn, it's on a size 10 needle. It's going to work up really quickly. So this is that um, kind of blown, unspun 
yarn that I'm working with, it weighs nothing. Like this is gonna be lighter than air. But this was very fun to work on when I was there because I had something to do. So I was sitting outside and I, I could read my pattern and feel engaged in the pattern, but it wasn't too hard to figure out how to pick up and work my way down. So I hadn't done any of that on my way down. So I did the whole um, front piece. And so then I thought, well, good, I'm gonna set that aside because now I'm to the point where I, I could have picked up the neck and worked on that because I did bring needles along. I brought a whole set of interchangeables. I brought needles that I knew I would use for the neck and the sleeve on that. But I really wanted to get started on this other sweater. So I bought yarn for the Salt Dotna crop by Caitlin Hunter at ZK 2018, 2019 from Diana Suburban Stitcher. And I went out and read, that was kind of at the height of the popularity of that sweater. And I went out and read the comments and the neckline is a disaster on this sweater. And I don't know why Caitlin Hunter was not kind of responding to the problems with this neckline. I'm sure that the neckline worked for the size sample that she made it in, but lots and lots of people made it and lots and lots of comments out there about how the neck is so, does not match the picture. I think that's the biggest concern is that lots of people's necklines come up way higher than the picture because there are short rows in the back and the short rows don't sit down far enough so the neckline comes up higher. So I set my yarn aside. I was like, well, I don't wanna deal with that. But now I have this yarn that I purposely bought for this sweater and I, I needed to decide to make it. These were the four colors I bought and I have two of the gold. So I wanted it to be a light, bright summer cropped, short sleeved. And I started knitting. I started using my colors and I don't like this blue with this teal. I, I just don't like them together. And they're too close in range to use as color work. So I was always gonna have to use this blue with this, these two and this green with these two because these two could never work together. And that is just a problem that I made when I chose my yarns. I couldn't find a fourth color, I'm pretty sure at the time. So it would work if I only kept this blue with these two colors over here, but I just really didn't like with the teal. And I could have taken the tealy green out and used the blue, but one of them needed to go. So on Monday, when we got to Arizona, my husband had a conference, Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday. And he was a vendor, he, was, uh, he had a reception, he took people out to dinner. Um, so he was gonna be busy, like I had to eat by myself and kind of take care of myself, but I had, I had a rental car. So I went to Tempe Yarn, on Monday and just to see what it was like. And then Thursday, by Thursday I'd figured out that I needed a different color for, the, for this. I'm gonna tell you all about the trip, but I'm interspersing it here. I needed a different color for this sweater, so I went back <laughs> to Tempe Yarn. And it wasn't super close, it was, and they were lovely. So I have a story to tell about that, but I'm not gonna tell it now. So I went back and I was gonna either get purple or orange or lime because I really, for me, you know me, Miss Bright Color, I thought I could do a pop of green, bright green, light green, mint green, um, maybe with this, I wasn't sure, purple or orange or rust. And I took it up to the counter and I asked the gals and they picked orange. <laughs> and I like it too, because I can use it with all the colors and ironically, they didn't know me, right? And they're like, oh, I kind of like the orange. And I'm like, orange is my favorite color. And they're like, oh, well then for sure you can go with, I don't know that orange is my favorite color, but this is a deep orange. It's, you know, it's not as rust as the, but it's pretty dark. It's blowing out a little bit. It's not, it's not neon. It's not orange traffic cone. So I pur purchased two skeins of this just so that I would have them. And this is dyed by the yarn store owner. And so I think it'll be much better. But those two trips then of course, that takes out of your knitting time when you spend time at the yarn store. So here is my Soldatna. 
and I didn't have the orange to, uh, or the purple or any color to use right away here at the top. And I thought, I have yarn at home. I can keep knitting and I can figure this out. So I used the, the, the three colors at the top, but now I'm going into the orange and I'm gonna put big chevrons next. And I think it'll be much better. But you do do all of this short rowing here, as you can see, and it comes all the way around to the front. So when I had this on, when I took this onto two needles, when I switched to a larger circumference needle, I laid it out on the airplane, took a picture to make sure that it was going to be increasing the stitches large enough to go over my shoulders. I think it will. But I did many fewer short rows, many fewer. I think I did four and I think the pattern called for this would have come, this would have been a much bigger piece, which makes that neckline come up so much higher. And then the increases need to happen. So I will probably block it. Once I get a little further down, put two needles on it or put um, some tried on tubing and then block it and make sure that it is going to fit around my shoulders because it's pretty gathered up on here. I mean, I have tons of stitches on here. So that's what I'm working on. And I'm going to make this soldat and a crop that I bought at the time, the yarn and the pattern work. <laughs> because, and I think that this is can become something else. Because it's not that the color is bad on this. You, you guys just know me. I'm just such a bright. And I, these two together just weren't cutting it for me. This has some black specks in it. And, um, and this has a lot of highs and lows, very lights and lots of darks. And I just felt like there was too much going on when I was knitting with it and that these two couldn't be used together in color work because they were gonna, they'd look like the same color pretty much side by side. There wasn't enough contrast. There you go, that's the correct term that I've been looking for for 10 minutes, contrast. <laughs> Oh, you guys have to laugh with me throwing that all back in the bag. So that's what I worked on on my trip. I am still working on Sven and Solve. I wanted to take them along because I really am enjoying working on them. But I'm still waiting for my skein of yarn from Barrett Wool. So now I have to write him today because I'm sure he just forgot that he was going to send me the green. Um, and I thought, I'll just wait till I get back. But they're on double points. And I got most of the hat and the um, sweater on one done and the head and part of the sweater on another. Uh, and I just thought it's too many skeins of yarn. because I think there are eight colorways and too much, too many needles to bring that along. Plus, I didn't have the green skein because it didn't come in my kit. So that is still on the needles. And then I finished black socks for Kylie for her birthday. We did not see her for her birthday. I'm kind of bummed about that because we were gone and we couldn't see them the weekend before because of Cody. So we had planned to go out to dinner with them the weekend before on that Saturday night. And she didn't want to see me. Um, and she they didn't want to come out here. And honestly, it was a very good decision because the two of us together would have just grieved much more dramatically if we were together loving on that dog. So we just said, you know what, it would be better. They had seen him recently and said, you know what, we, we've known he's going to have cancer. He had cancer. And so they, um, I just hadn't seen her. So I put in her car because she was out here judging a speech tournament. She still judges and coaches speech and debate, even though she doesn't have time, but she loves those kids so much. Um, and my husband went and got her car and was going to change her oil or something because she, she drives out to the local high school out here. She parks her car for the day and judges and then goes, oh. So he went over, swapped her car, brought it back over, fixed it. And then in the car I put, I bought her two white sweaters for work. She wanted a white crew neck, plain sweater, dress sweater for work. Um, and she didn't want cream. It was really hard to find. So I found two and, um, and they were on sale. So I put, and one had like cables, some plain cables and stuff in the front. So I put those in and I put her socks on top, but I only finished one pair. I wanted to finish two before we left, but again, I would have finished them had we been going out to dinner on Saturday night and Cody had not gotten sick. I had plenty of time, but 
that Friday and Saturday were kind of a wash. And so I have one more pair to put the heels in and then I can make another pair out of the tubes. So I had tubes cranked from Knit Spin Farm. Um, you can send them your sock yarn and they will crank it to whatever gauge you want. And they will also ask you how much of the tube you want cranked because I had them crank almost the entire tube and leave me you know, pieces to do the heels, toes, and then I rip the cuff and the toe out and re-knit it because I didn't want before. I just wanted to get them in the mail that day. And I, I think you need 15 grams. Somebody tell me. I have notes somewhere. I think you need 15 grams to do the heels and the toes and the cuffs. And so I just said, just crank most of it, leave me a little bit. So he did. So I ripped out the for the cuff and re-knit and ripped out for the toe and re-knit. But I got three full pairs of women's size eight socks out of two Regia 50 gram skeins in black, right? So, and Kylie likes a pretty long sock, but not super tall. And the third pair are gonna have a shorter cuff by maybe an inch, but they're still a way above the ankle. Um, so yeah, I got three pairs of black socks out of two, well, so it would be 100 grams, cranked at nine stitches to the inch, I think he cranked for me. Um, yeah, it worked great. And I didn't have to knit the entire black sock. And I could have put different colored heel toes and cuffs in. I added a lavender cuff on two of the socks and a lavender stripe, because purple is one of Kylie's favorite co colors, a lavender stripe in one of the pairs um, because they match and like the numbers match. And I wanted her to be able to keep them like together if she wanted. I mean, they're kind of interchangeable, but for the last pair, so I don't have to knit with black, I may put color on the toes and the cuff. I don't know, we'll see. That's what I have left to do. So that's what I'm working on. Boy, adding that section to the podcast is gonna make it a little longer. But people commented that they really liked seeing what I was working on. I also am working on some designs. So I thought I would share that briefly here. I'm gonna be coming out with a couple of baby blankets. The Knit Words pillow sachets, the little ones, went to the tech editor along with a hat and cowl pattern for uh, later this year for Pride. Um, and I have a new tech editor and she got back to me on the day that Cody passed and said, hey, your patterns are ready. One of them has a little problem on the crown. And I said, I, I can't deal with it. And she has a new puppy and she's like, I totally understand. And she said, I'll fix the crown and I'll get them back to you. And then when you get back from your vacation, they'll be good to go. Some of you are test knitters for me and you've been waiting for some of these patterns. And I don't know what happened, honestly, to my December. I just kind of took the month off. I just didn't, I just didn't get going. So I have a couple of sample knits I knit, need knit of blankets um, that need to be knit up for me. Um, that need to be sent to the tech editor uh, that should go shortly. I am doing a the cowl that I showed um, with the big cables. I'm doing a cowl and a hat and with Chelsea Yarns, a collaboration that I want to come out in February. Um, but she had to dye me the yarn and I got my mailing notification today. So I was hoping the yarn would be here when I got back because I could cast on and knit the hat um, in the next day, um, but it's not here yet. And the patterns are written, but I have to knit the hat before I can send it to the tech editor. So that will be another one that's coming. Um, what else do I have? I have a uh, kind of a hood pattern coming with some fur. Um, and so I have a lot of work to do in the next month. But I'm having guests come on Thursday, which I'm going to talk about. And so I don't know how much design work I'll get done. I'll get knitting done. Just really enjoying knitting for myself. And I know there's got to be a balance, right? I get that. I, I preach that. Um, but I'm either all in on design and I'm on the computer and I'm doing it all the time or I'm knitting for myself. I don't seem to be able to say 
during the day you do this and at night once I'm in on a project then I just want to keep working on it and now all I want to knit on is that sold dot and the color work love color work so and I didn't last night because here's here's another organizational tip I am cleaning out the photos on my phone so on the trip I thought this will be the perfect time for you to spend time scrolling through the years of photos that you have and look at the ones you have, the videos. And every time I take a wave picture at the beginning of a podcast, I take, you know, six or eight photos because sometimes my eyes are closed or my mouth is moving. And then they're in my phone. And so I narrow it down. I keep the one I want to keep. Well, they're all on my computer. I do not need those in my phone anymore because I save them to my podcast folder and use them on YouTube. I don't need them anymore, but they're in there. All the books I talk about, I take a photo of there. Some of those are in there. I have videos that I posted on Instagram. I don't need them on my phone anymore. They're on Instagram. So I have so much data used up on my phone. So I've been spending. So I started in 2022 and then I went backwards so I'm back in 2020 and I, last night I deleted 1,003 files, photos and videos <laughs> off my phone, just being smart and getting rid of stuff. But then stuff that I want to keep or that I want to file away that I take pictures of. Do you guys do that? You take pictures of like a quote or whatever. I emailed them to myself. I have 43 emails from myself in the last week <laughs> of things that I have to go in and file and put away and save in different places. But it's a really good job to get done. So last night I was like, why don't you spend a few more minutes and finish up 2020? So that's done. And so I did, I sat in the, Ross went to bed fairly early and I sat and watched a show and I just kept scrolling and scrolling and taking pictures and sending and deleting. Oh my gosh, it's just a huge job when you don't keep up with it day by day. So. The other thing that I'm doing, and I, maybe all of you know this, but I took a picture. Okay, so let's talk. Sometimes I just jump around and I think you guys, are you following me? <laughs> let's talk about my gluten-free journey quickly. I was able to eat gluten-free my entire trip except for one meal. And that I could have eaten gluten-free. I chose not to because they had cheeseburgers at... Barrett Jackson and French fries and they looked delicious but they did not have like big pieces of lettuce to hold it with and I did not want to eat the hamburger patty with my hands I could have but I ate the bun it was fine like one time right the rest of the time I, I ate gluten-free but in order to tell this story it's I've been doing really well I didn't gain any weight while I was on vacation um, we walked a ton. My hip got very sore. I was shocked at how out of shape I was. Because um, one day I think we walked 14 or 18,000 steps. I don't I have to look. but um, And I, I don't walk that far yet at home. Like I'm walking. Well, I don't. None of the counting apps for steps and distance are very accurate. Because I'm short. I take short steps and I put my length of my stride in, I've measured it and whatever. So all I can do is compare from day to day, right? Cause I can go to the dog park and walk two miles and come home and it, it doesn't read as what I would think two miles would read as, as far as everyone's steps go. But so this morning I made breakfast. I had two eggs, two chicken sausage with apple and a pile of vegetables for breakfast. So there's my breakfast. Well, it's my lunch, so I don't eat breakfast. Like I get up and I drink all my water. And then when I get hungry, so this is about 1130, this is my lunch, breakfast, food for lunch. So I bought a giant bag of uh, Brussels sprouts, mushrooms, red peppers, yellow peppers. Uh, what else is in there? From Costco, a giant frozen bag. I think they're maybe even called stir fried vegetables or something or vegetable medley. It was It was gigantic. And I portioned it out into these little sand, um, keepers and I froze them separately. It's too much vegetable now. I know better. So I get a, like just a ton of <laughs> vegetable and I can't eat it all. But I want to get my fiber and my protein in. But what I'm doing now 
I'm circling all the way back around. You guys know I know how to come back around on a story, right? If I slide this up, I can type in what the picture is. It will tell me where I took it and it'll give me that information, but I can type in Corey's breakfast or Corey at Stitches Midwest or Corey and Ross at Barrett Jackson. It'll tell me where I took the picture, but I can add the caption so that it's searchable later on. And then it starts to do facial recognition for people. So let me see if I have a people in here. Okay, here's a picture of Kylie. And if I flash this up, there will be a little circle right here that tells me that this, they know that this is Kylie. She got her hair cut. It's inverted in the back and she didn't fix it this day. She didn't do her bangs, she said, but she sent me a picture, a funny picture because I was sad. Um, so like that recognized that as Kylie. So I put Kylie haircut, but my phone would tell me that it does facial recognition. So as it recognizes people in your life, okay, like on this one, randomly going to tell another story. While I was on my trip, my husband goes to bed early and he was so exhausted. He, he was up at 5 a.m. going for his run and, you know, being over to breakfast at 7.30 and then working all day and coming back to the hotel at 9 o'clock at night. So he wanted to go to bed. Well, we, we were at a conference center called the Wigwam and it was be beautiful, lovely, but there was nowhere for me to be to have a light on to sit and knit. And I have a little neck light, but I need more light than that. So I went in the bathroom and I pulled the wheelie chair into the bathroom and the bathroom had a little closet and that's where I sat for three hours at night. And so I have this picture of the Needles at the Ready podcast guys, Kevin and Ray. And so when I wiped up on that picture, the two little circles came up and I could click on them because they'd have a little question mark for whether or not they were Kevin or Ray. And then I can click on the little question mark, type in Kevin's name, and it can come up. And then my phone will start to recognize if there are ever any other pictures. So if you don't know that tip about your phone or, um, I have an iPhone. Um, so yeah, I just thought I would share, just share that. Anyway, <laughs> if you are sitting waiting for something, one of the things you can start doing is cleaning out your phone photos and you can start labeling them and you can put them in folders and albums. Like I had a bunch of pictures from Kylie's graduation. I put them all in an album. It was just a nice way to spend some time at the airport, some time in the car when we were driving. I could just scroll through and I could just delete and get rid of things. <laughs> Random tip. Okay. I want to do some tips and tricks, so let's do that right now. My friend Suzanne, who is a lover of the podcast and extraordinary friend and Ravelry helper. So if you're in the Sock Cal, you will notice that Suzanne is doing a lot of help with my Ravelry group and making sure that people are asking questions, she's answering. Um, we keep in touch by text and she will let me know if something's going on and I'm missing it, especially when I was out of town and I had, you know, Cody. Um, so... Suzanne has been knitting since the beginning year, my basic beginner Erin weight hat pattern over and over and over again, using all of her scrap yarns held double and triple, triple, I think, because um, she's just using it up. And they're turning out so cute. So I posted a picture on my Instagram and I will put it in here of a bunch of the hats that she's making. And I thought I should just tell everyone that if you want something that works up super quickly, you could just do a basic Aaron Waite hat and just, you know, whip out a bunch of hats to use up all your scrap yarn. If you're looking to use your fingering or your DK, your worsted, holding them together. So I wanted to share that. And then I want to share an interesting photo with you. In 1980. I don't know. We'll just guess. Say 85. My husband's parents owned a resort in northern Minnesota. And we would go up there every work weekend and work. And, um, and I think this was right before we were married. So we were young. But I was a, te a teacher. Going to be a, I was a teacher for two years. And then I, we got married. And then I taught here in the Twin Cities. And his dad gave me a piece of plywood 
in order for me to sit on the floor or sit on their couch and do my work on, correct papers and stuff, and I covered it with contact paper. Now I wish I, I'm sure I have a picture somewhere of Kylie using this board because 40 years later, we still have this board, but here's the board. And I decided to peel all this old contact paper because it was all gouged up. Like we used it to cut quilts and we used it on the floor to put little puzzles together when she was a kid. So this is just a piece of plywood, kind of unfinished raw, and then I recovered it with new contact paper. So I just took a razor blade scraper thing and I ripped it off. I'd get big chunks and then sometimes I'd get little chunks. So I'll put a picture in of the new board. But what I noticed is that we had an elevated water bowl for Cody in the laundry room and he would lap up water and splash on the wall. And I noticed that there, you know, there were some water spots on the wall and I thought we need to put a piece of plastic behind this water bowl. So a few weeks ago, I got the brilliant idea to cover this board in contact paper and in bright color contact paper and just set it up against the wall because that way the wall wouldn't get wet. We normally feed Cody in the garage and he has a big water dish out there, but we had moved one into the house a while back and we had it in the mudroom where there was tile, but we moved it to the laundry room because it was more out of the way. Anyway, so it was hitting the wall. So that's what I decided to do. And that board, if you are a grandparent or an auntie or a parent, and you have kids who play on the floor, they color, they draw, having that board was, you know, just this big. It could sit on your lap. Everybody used it for everything. It, we slid it underneath the couch or the chair um, in the family room. It was always there. If the kids wanted to play a game on it, 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 it was the best, best piece of wood. And could I have bought now a nice fancy piece of plexiglass or plastic or whatever? But the fact that Ross's mom and dad are both gone now and I have plywood and contact paper that they had given me back in the day for this like lap board that was, you know, big, bigger than just a little thing that you would um, sit in your lap to, to write on. Yeah, anyway, it's got memories associated with it. And Ross, I cannot believe you are scraping that off there. And I said, you know, there was a little written star underneath the contact paper in pen that someone had put on that, you know. So anyway, pretty fun contact paper and a piece of plywood worked great for us for many years okay what have I been watching lately I'm gonna go really quickly because I've been watching a lot in the last two weeks and I watched some things while I was in Arizona after Ross would um, leave to go for a run or come back so I, I would turn the TV on when I was getting ready I watched dream home makeover that was recommended by a viewer and that is um, a woman in Utah who makes over dream homes and there are like five seasons and I watched them all. <laughs> um, she and her husband are in business together. It was lovely. Then I watched a movie called The Note that was very good. I really did so like the that. premise is that after a tragic plane crash, a local journalist discovers a note that she believes was written by one of the passengers. She seeks the note's intended receiver, but the journey is more than she realizes. Um, this came out in 2007 and it's not the notebook. So that's what will come up if you Google it, but it's called the note. It was very good. I really liked it. Um, then I watched a movie called dog gone and a boy adopts a dog when he's in college and the dog has a medical condition and the dog gets lost in the mountains when they're hiking and they have 30 days to find the dog before he needs his next in injection. And I watched this before um, and it was lovely. And you, you're you pretty sure the dog gets found, right? But how he's gonna survive all these days and weeks and how they're gonna find him, where they're gonna find him. And it's based on a true story, phenomenal, dog gone. Then I watched All Creatures Great and Small season two. If you have not watched that, it's just lovely. It's just, 
the scenery is beautiful the setting it's very british uh, oh all creatures great and small highly recommend i watched glow up season two which is the makeup show where the people are doing makeup and competing to win the grand prize and become a makeup artist um they're not great they're not all great at it so you see them struggle some of you know um but this is um british and so they're nice to each other kind of like British great british bake-off they all like each other and it doesn't get catty and mean like some of the american reality tv shows then i watched bling empire which is brand new came out on netflix it's about wealthy people in new york city your mouth will hang open Shock shockingly hang open money is relative we were talking about that at the barrett car auction right i mean there are people spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on fancy cars that have a value but are so out of the reach for most people that it's you know you're just you're shocked that they you know this we were having lunch with this girl and she was sitting across the table from us and her mom had just bought a four hundred thousand dollar car and and she just she was just a darling young girl she was sitting with her boyfriend they were on the computer eating lunch and you have to share tables because it's so crowded you know it can be so busy and she kind of they're big tables of eight and uh so we just said you know thanks for letting us sit here you know where are you from da, da, da. salt lake city and oh my mom just bought bid on a car she got it and they're oh my gosh what car you know what my husband and man yeah four hundred and twenty thousand dollars you know wow like so th this bling empire these young people are so entitled it 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 was very eye-opening like one of the girls doesn't know how to do anything for herself because she's lived in a building with help for 24 7. she just calls down if she wants tea she calls down if she it's just shocking she changes her outfits three and four times a day goes out and buys some new dresses ten thousand dollar bill you know I, it was just shocking i don't know why i liked it like i enjoy like i was fast i was fascinated I, I, you know you're kind of like you when you pass an accident and you you know you shouldn't look at it but you have to look that's what it yeah that's what it's like <laughs> like is that saying something about my character that I had, I, like I had to watch, I had to look, I had to keep watching. It, it, it's just the wealth was extraordinary. So then after that, I got recommended Bling Dubai. So it came up and started watching it, but it's got subtitles. So I can't knit and watch subtitles. So I kind of stopped, but it's the same premise, people in Dubai with all this money <clears throat> and uh, incredible amounts of wealth. Um, and then I started watching a show called Model, and it had subtitles too, so I had to stop watching that. So that's what I watched. <laughs> Next, things I saw on the internet that I wanted to share with you. Well, look at this. I, I didn't think I shared this last time, but I might have, and I didn't go back and look at the show notes, so now I'm just going to share it again. But remember I was telling you how you can make little book covers and put it in an ornament for all the books you read last year well guess what this lady will do it for you she will put all your little books in an ornament on little pieces of cardstock on Etsy and it it's the it's price depend on how many books you need to have done it's called bookish baubles gifts and she has 313 sales on Etsy. And so it's your custom year of books. I'll link it in the show notes. Yeah. I think it probably came up because I talked about it on the podcast. Then I saw this sweater on Instagram. It's called the Marjolaine sweater. And my mom's name is Marjolaine. And I've never, ever known anyone to be named Marjolaine and spelled the way my mom spells it. But it's just lovely. So now I might have to knit that for my mom, but it's in light fingering weight. I don't love my mom that much. <laughs> I'm sorry, mom. 
So I would probably have to make it in DK and knit a smaller size. So it's size one through five XL. It's by Eleanor Mortensen. It's written in English, French, and German. I think she's German. The descriptions on Ravelry is in German. But I sent it to my I sent my mom a picture. So now she already knows that it's out there. But you no, know, if somebody names a pattern your name, then you almost have to, right? Then look at this new, brand new, just released Elizabeth Beanie. It's got a bow on the top, an I-cord bow. Oh my gosh. So cute. Elizabeth Beanie by North Country Knits, Jessica Kogut came out Friday. Super cute. Let's share that. And then did you guys see this on Instagram? Lots of people were posting it. And it was linked to a New York Times opinion op-ed piece. Um, and it, the piece is called The Revolutionary Power of a Skein of Yarn. And you can Google it and read the article. And it is about how Michelle Obama talked about being a knitter. And like people were shocked. And how knitters have done things for years to upset, you know, the general culture and you know she references things from the past and the present um it was a, a really nicely written article opinion piece about how it is just not a grandma's sport right so i will link the article in the show notes it's two pages uh printed pages um so it won't take you very long to read it's it's well written and a really nice article about knitting that you might want to have but that um knitted fist was um, part of the article that when they produced that. Special notes and things I have to tell you. Thank you so much for buying patterns for me. Oh my gosh, you guys are all the best. I paid my bills. <laughs> and it's not that I couldn't pay my bills. My husband and I have a wonderful living. I live in a beautiful house with a really nice car. I don't worry about money, but my business <laughs> is not always solvent every week, week to week. <laughs> and I really want it to be. I really want to like purchase yarn when I go to Tempe Yarn out of my business account, buy things. I bought a couple of skeins of yarn for uh, prizes. You know, I want to be able to do those things, do my shipping and not charge it to my home account, right? Ship out prizes send books and things like that and not be out of money in my PayPal <laughs> and my little bank account that I have. I always try to keep at least $500 over there so that things are, and when I don't teach like all fall after I had my hip replacement, <laughs> I don't make as much money. And so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for buying patterns from me. That was very, very nice of you. Join the sock knit along. I drew for prizes today and I'm shocked. There are only 18 posts on Instagram using the hashtag IRockSocks23. And about half of them are for, from Tiffany because she's knit several pair. So you guys, you, you can still win a prize. You have two months to knit a pair of socks. You have till the almost the end of March. And you can win a prize by participating in the chatter thread on Ravelry. So posting the yarn you're choosing, posting every time you, you know, you knit a stitch, post a picture, no, but you know, I draw from the chatter th thread and from Instagram. So join the Cal, any one of my patterns can be used, my sock patterns. And you could win, I mean, I have some great prizes, really good prizes. I have yarn, I have two sweaters quantities of yarn I'm giving away. So make sure you do that. Okay, this is gonna be a little bit of a um, opinion piece, what's on my mind. Just a reminder that unasked for advice is always criticism. If your friends and family or husband or wife or partner do not ask you for your advice, but you give it to them, that 
is criticism. You need to say to the person, do you want some advice or do you want me to just listen? Right? When I put stuff out on my podcast, sometimes I will say, what do you all think? Let me know. And other times I'm just rambling on and giving my opinion. And if you come into my comments, and I'm, this doesn't happen very often, but someone gave me some feedback that they don't sell their yarn that they don't want anymore. And I am selling my yarn. And that is fine. That's what that person does. But then there was an explanation as to why that person does it that way. And it came across, not intentionally, but as criticism of the way I was doing it, right? Because she's commenting and giving me her experience and her experience is different than what I'm doing. So that's criticism. I'm sure that the person didn't mean it that way, right? But I was like, hmm, it just sits a little wrong with you when someone tells you, well, this is how I did it. When you didn't ask them, right, for their, how would you do it, is, is when they're looking for your, you know, your comment. So I am selling my yarn, my stash, um, and that's my choice. Uh, so, it, and that, it, it happens occasionally where people will come into the comments, or I see it happen when people are at knitting group too, or someone's sharing something, and then we, and I've done it, I am not a purist here. Like, I, there's, I have done this a hundred times. Something pops into my head that I think would be helpful in the moment, very helpful to them. I have done it differently. I think that this might be a better way. And I open my mouth and I spill it out. And no matter what, if that person did not ask, that's gonna be seen as criticism of the way they did it, how they did it, when they did, whatever, okay? So I just thought, you know what? It's been in my notes to talk about <laughs> and I've been not wanting to bring it up. And I thought, I'm just gonna say it, you guys know me, I can stand on a soapbox now and then. But you know, we have to just remember that unsolicited advice comes across as criticism. Okay, sweater camp is this weekend. Darn it anyway, sweater camp, which I have gone to the last couple of years. They went to a bigger event space this year. The cost was very pricey in my humble opinion. Um, and so my group of friends decided not to go. We are local and we could stay at home and drive in. That's not as much fun. But the hotels and places to stay in Stillwater, which is at least an hour from my house, um, are pricey. And we could stay further away, cheaper. But if you wanna be right downtown and stuff, we. I just felt like we had been fortunate we had gone and we weren't gonna go this year. So instead, I have some friends coming to my house. I bought a virtual pass, so did another friend, um, and we're just gonna knit at my house. So next time I'll tell you all about it, um, but I think it should be a fun weekend. It's gonna be bitter cold, um, <laughs> bitter cold and we're just gonna sit in our lounge pants and our sweatpants and our pajamas um, and just knit and just sit around and eat. Everyone's gonna bring, you know, what they like to eat, their snacks or whatever. We're gonna order in food. Um, we may go out to dinner one night here locally in town. Um, I'm not cooking for everybody the whole time. I'm not making big bref breakfast. We'll just put out, you know, cereal and bagels and toast or whatever um and we don't even make coffee so Matt <clears throat> remember <laughs> you gotta bring your own coffee I have a coffee pot but it's up in the closet like, I just don't drink it so I don't know how to make it very well 
yeah, so sweater camp is this weekend at my house. But you're not all invited. <laughs> Sorry. You know, got to be a little careful about that. <clears throat> that sounded terrible. Okay, just moving on. Let's do Corey's stories. I went to Arizona. I knit at two knitting groups. I went to Tempe Yarn. I had a lovely time. The weather was cold. Um, Three-year lows. They haven't had it this cold in Arizona in three years. There, were fr there was frost on the window two mornings. Okay, and that's relative too, right? They thought it was freezing. They thought it was absolutely frigid. People were wearing stocking hats and winter coats. I walked outside in my quarter zip. Um, it was very chilly in the morning, so I would wait and go for my walk later, like at 11. Um, Ross ran early, and he, he said it was quite cold, and we didn't bring close for quite that cold and it always gets cool at nights in the desert right but um it was like yeah 36 40 it would it got up to 55 then it got up to 60 I think one day it got up to 62 but it was not warm I got a little sun on my face and my neck outside at Barrett Jackson on third Wednesday afternoon we walked a lot um, outside and I got a little sun in the back of my neck surprisingly it was sunny the whole time we were there and I mean palm trees and orange trees right like we don't have orange trees in Minnesota I know that that's not like shocking to anyone who lives in the south but the orange trees were full of oranges oranges dropping everywhere just full of oranges just gorgeous palm trees it yeah so that was lovely um I walked into Tempe Yarns on Monday and it was about a 40, 40 minute drive, maybe something like that. 40, it wasn't, but you know, I was game. And uh, oh my gosh, there is someone riding a fat tire up my snowy street. Fat tire bicycle. Wow. I live on a road that goes to a cul-de-sac and we have a main road out here and it's very biker friendly but a lot of times they turn at the corner because they can't see the cul-de-sac from the corner and then they have to go back up the little hill and I always feel bad. I think that's probably what happened. Um, that he's out riding and went down the cul-de-sac and figured there's no there's no outlet down there. Um, so I walked into Tempe Yarn and the woman behind the counter said, do I know you? I follow you on Instagram. I love your stuff. What are the chances, right? Like, what are the chances that you're in Arizona and you walk in and this young, energetic, vibrant person says, I know you. And then she came over and she said, I know the network stuff and I follow your podcast. Oh my goodness. It was, it was really, that was very nice. Just, you know, very flattering. You just feel like, whoa, really? Um, so I looked around, they have a very nice store, quite a bit of yarn. They have a lot of natural fibers because of course it's the desert. So you got to knit lightweight things. Um, I didn't have anything to buy except I wanted to buy a couple prizes for the podcast. So um, I bought a really cool bag because of course we all need more bags in our lives, right? <laughs> Tacos. Talk about fun. Talk about fun. It was $5. Clear plastic. <laughs> very narrow. Very, um, probably will tear and rip in a year, but whatever. Uh, then I put all my stuff in it that I bought while I was down there. <laughs> so me, I was like, I would have bought you all one if they would have had another one. I would have bought another one for sure and, and given it away as a prize, but they didn't have any more, so... That's one of the things I bought. Then I bought this lovely skein of yarn by Sundial Design. It is a DK weight. And of course, orange and raspberry. I have another one right up there. Um, but of similarly colored yarn. But it really spoke to me. I thought, oh my goodness, that's just lovely. Then I bought a couple of um giveaway items so i bought a keychain with a little puppy knitting uh, it's in the package um, and then on the back it says i pause for yarn 
so I thought that was cute. And this one is being given away today. This is a little green sheep dancing key holder. You slip that over your key, and then on the back it says Knitwit. And then I bought this keychain, which may be mine. It's a measuring tape, which I thought would be kind of nice, but you could also, but I wish it went over my wrist. That would be the only thing is if it went over my wrist. So they had these there. And I bought these little increase and decrease stitch markers. They are like um, stone or polymer clay. They look like stone. Very cute. Then I went through their button bin and I got orange buttons. I picked out all the orange buttons. None of them match perfectly. There are um, mostly, they were round. They're mostly the same size not completely the same size. There are some are a little bit bigger in diameter. I'm gonna try to flip them all over and show you a little, but yeah. So I bought a package of buttons. They were $3 each, they're glass. So that was that. And then this is the other giveaway that I'm doing today. Oops, skeins. And the reason that I bought this is because I had this on the counter and the woman that worked there said, you know what? Our owner dyes yarn, delicious collectibles, and she dyed a colorway that you would love if you love this one. And she went in the back and she brought out these two um, skeins and it was for Small Business Saturday. And they're muted. They're very soft, desert, lovely. But this is me, <laughs> right? So I bought them, but I knew in the moment, I was like, I, that is going to be a really great prize for the podcast, uh, for the sock knit along. So I'm giving it away today on the sock knit along. I've already drawn. So I ended up leaving there spending a hundred and <laughs> some dollars, um, but it was a lovely store. They were very nice to me. They had a lot of things. A lot of tchotchkes, a lot of yarn. I really enjoyed it. And then I went back a second time and got the orange to go with my soldatna. And then my friend Mary, I went to her knitting group in her neighborhood on Tuesday. And I went at, I don't know, one o'clock or something, two o'clock. And they meet in this building. I, I don't know what the neighborhood calls it. Um, it was a just beautiful building and we sat in it and everyone was so nice and welcoming. Hi to all the Arizona knitters that were at that group. Um, I wish I could remember all their names. I should have written them down. There was one, two, three, four, five, seven, and then Mary and I. They were lovely um, and so welcoming and they do show and tell, which I loved. Everybody got a moment to talk. And at my knitting group, we can get so big that one end of the table doesn't talk to the other end of the table. And I really liked that they went around and shared. And then people brought things that they wanted to share. And it, yeah, it was really lovely. I didn't get a whole lot of knitting done on that day um, because I was talking chatterboxing. Imagine that. <clears throat> but then I knew she had another knitting group that met on Wednesday that's charity knitting for breast cancer. And then there's a knitting group on Friday that she has at Panera. So when I had originally texted her, she said, whatever works for you, whatever day you're on vacation, you know, you can come, you don't have to. And I said, well, I might want to come to both because I don't want to go to Barrett Jackson <laughs> again, right? Like I want to have a reason to not go to Barrett Jackson, but I really didn't need one because my husband had someone to go with him on Friday and Saturday. Um, and he doesn't need someone to go to him, but it is more fun if someone's there. So I knew I had to go on Saturday because my girlfriend um, was going to go on Saturday because she worked in Arizona on Friday. So I went, we were going to go to lunch. So um, on Friday, she had to work in the morning and then she got delayed. So she texted and said, hey, my client's running late. I'm going to be late. Why don't you go ahead and eat? Go to that knitting group if you want. I'll just catch up with you in a little while. And I said, okay. And then I said, here's the address to the Panera that they're meeting at, meet me there. And so she did, she came there 
and it started at one and went till three ish, but sometimes they stay till four. And that was a bigger group. And that was an open group because a lady came over while we were knitting. And she said, she sat down and she said, I need to know about this group. I am so jealous. And they said, you can join us. It was They were really nice about just letting me be there and then letting, you know, anybody come. And then they did a show and tell. And a few of the ladies were the same ladies on Tuesday, but not all of them. And um, the... Tuesday group is a crafting group. So they have sewers and crocheters and knitters. It's a, it's a crafting group. Uh, but on Friday, it was just knitting at Panera. And they just welcomed me. <laughs> they were so nice. And when I got there, a couple of them had remembered me from the last time I came at the library. So they're still, you know, from 2018 and 19 and 20, maybe. some whatever, whenever we went because we've gone twice before and then the pandemic. Um, but then one lady brought, she needed help. She wanted help with seaming a poncho garter stitch to garter stitch edge. And she had started it. And so I taught her, I showed her how to, what, how I would do it. I would mattress stitch the garter stitch edges together. And then someone else needed help. And my friend Mary needed to rip out her lace chemo hat that she was knitting on Tuesday. So I picked back about four rows of that for her because it's so nice when someone else does that for you. Like, it's so nice when you don't have to pick back your own lace. <laughs> and so I just sat and did that. Um, but then my friend came at two o'clock and we left at five. <laughs> Susan came and she was working on a baby sweater and she was struggling to pick up the stitches, it was one of those crossover baby sweaters to pick up the stitches all the way up one side, down, around, and back across and to have it be even. And so I said, just give me the needle. I'll do it right now. I mean, we're here. We're sitting here. I don't want to do it at Bear Jackson. I don't want to take it back to the hotel. And so, and then my friend Mary said, well, my husband's out of town. I don't mind staying. And another couple ladies stay, stayed. Who is this lady? Nicole? Maybe Jan? Jean? It, oh, I feel bad. Anyway, so they were still visiting. So like four hours later, we we're like, hey, we should probably go meet the guys for supper. And they, the, they were at Barrett Jackson and they didn't plan to come back till five. But it was just ironic that we sat there that whole time. They had big long tables they set up. And so it that was lovely. It was not my in, real intention to go to two knitting groups. Um, it just worked out that way. I just I just wanted to see Mary. Um yeah they were lovely it was very nice so then we spent we stayed we stayed at the wigwam for three nights and then we moved over to the princess um hotel and that is just that's just elevated luxury for us right it's so fancy but they have dogs in the lobby they have service dogs six service dogs that rotate and they, they are there from nine in the morning till four in the afternoon, Monday through Saturday. And you can just go and love. And the day that I went down, that I felt ready to just go down and spend some time with dogs, um, I'll put a picture in. Aisha and Diggs. Aisha was, as soon as she saw me step up the steps, it was like she knew. She came over and she like laid down and rolled over, like right on me. It was... It was lovely. I have never, ever seen service dogs. They were literally trained to be hosts. They are working dogs at the hotel. This elderly gentleman is there. I shouldn't call him elderly. He's probably my age. <laughs> no, he's older than me. But he's from St. Cloud, Minnesota. And they train the dogs. One of the dogs is his. And then other dogs go home to their homes at night. And they're there during the day. And, and I said, I missed them the one day. And he said, well, sometimes we're over by the concierge and some days, sometimes we're outside doing our business. And I was like, oh, that, that makes total sense. You know, sometimes they have to go get their water and go to the bathroom. But uh, they, these, you know, gentle, soft, just loving. They, and then they both just gathered by me and I, just, and I just chatterboxed with this man. I told him that about my lovely dog that I had just lost and how much this meant to me and oh it was just it was so nice but there are restaurants right there on site um so we ate at the La Hacienda which is a Mexican restaurant we ate there twice 
Um, we really liked their food. So we ate there on Wednesday night. And then when our friends came over on Friday, we said, do you just want to go down there? And they're like, you just ate there. And I, I said, there were several things on the menu <laughs> that I would have liked. Really good. And then we went over to Toro and we ate at the golf course. Um, they're having the big Phoenix Open this week um, coming in. And so they have a golf course restaurant. It was not busy when we were over there, but we had eaten there once before. The prices are real reasonable. Um, they have uh, Latin flavors, Latin and Asian flavors. So we had chaifa or chauf, which is like a rice and meat dish um, with Latin inspired flavors. Um, the first night is so good. Uh, it comes with shrimp and um, short ribs and andouille sausage. Um, I just had shrimp, uh, but it was, it was really good. So that was lovely. Um, yeah, we, it was, it was just really, it felt really indulgent and spoiled and nice to be away for the whole week. Even though, you know, we were sad, um, we, we would talk about dogs and Cody, but then we, we just, you know, not, and yeah, so it, it was a lovely vacation. So many of you wish me <laughs> to have a good vacation. So it, it was really nice. I don't remember the last time we went away for seven days and my husband worked his tail off just long days and being on and professional and, you know, and then they had this big reception for like 60 or 70 people and they had to go buy all the food and the alcohol and, and have the reception and take them all to dinner and have the reservations and they got there and they, they didn't have the reservation seating ready and so people had to wait. And yeah. So, you know, it's just a stressful time. So then when he was done on Wednesday at noon, he was like, okay, we're going to the princess, which is closer to the they run a shuttle to Barrett Jackson, which is why we like to stay there because they run a shuttle every half an hour so you don't have to drive because parking at Barrett Jackson is such a, and there is no way to explain, like we tried to tell our friends, Susan and Neil, what it's like. It's like the Minnesota State Fair on steroids and it's all cars all day long, every day. There are huge, giant, like six post circus tents with open sides that you can just walk up and down four or five aisles of cars that are up for sale being sold you could buy a helicopter there was a helicopter last year the last time we went there was a Learjet there are big um, there are tons of vendor tons of vendors all the big car dealers are there um, there's shopping for women there's jewelry there's just there's lots of money um, and the prices start at the beginning of the week with cars that are not as high priced. And then by Super Saturday, they do charity um, cars to give money to charity that people donate um, that go for like, you know, 500000 to a million dollars, um, really fancy. And then all day Saturday are like the big fancy extra special cars. You don't go to Barrett Jackson if you're going to get um, a bargain, like if you're looking for a bargain, but it's like going to a yarn vendor market, right? Where you just walk around and you're just, there's so much stimulation and you're, you're in your happy place. And that was my husband for four days, just. And as soon as we get back to the hotel, he'd be getting ready for dinner. He'd have it because they were live streaming it in the hotel. They have it live streaming behind the front desk. They have it live streaming in the bars. <laughs> it's just all meant to be all a part of that experience. But now they're having the Phoenix Open and the Super Bowl. So like, yeah, crazy time in Phoenix. <laughs> okay, let's do the giveaways and the audiobooks so we can be done. <laughs> this has gone on forever. So last time, the pink needle keeper pouch, zip pouch, and the yarn and the stitch markers, pink stitch markers and the yarn is going to podcast commenter number 41, Susan Chernuka. So Susan, send me your address and I will put this in the mail to you. You are the first winner of a podcast commenter. And last time you were all commenting on your favorite snacks. The strands of joy book, the Lena book goes to number six, Carolyn Jans. And I know Carolyn, she has done 
test knitting for me in the past and has also um, a podcast view has been a podcast viewer for forever. So Carolyn, I think I have your address. I will look, but you can send it to me just in case. And you get the Strands of Joy book. And then I have two giveaways to do for the sock cow. So the first giveaway is the two skeins of yarn from Tempe Yarn, and that goes to Janet Holler Woolstock. So I know Janet. She is kind of a member of my home knitting group. Um, but she babysits grandchildren, so she doesn't, she's not there very often, but I know Janet quite well. So Janet, I can just meet up with you and get this to you, that yarn. And then the other sock giveaway is going to number, oh, I don't have the number on here. Well, whatever. It's one skein of yarn, a stitch marker keeper box that was donated by my friend Bonnie. And the key ring, I think I put stitch markers, but it's actually a key ring uh, holder that says Knitwit. This is going to honor crowned Stephanie Loeffler. And I recognize Stephanie because she has tested it for me as well and has been a watcher of the podcast for a long time. <laughs> okay, so those are those giveaways. Then my friend Janet who has a website, um, sable, mysableyarns.com, who is going through the cancer battle and is getting rid of all of her stash and some of her projects, has offered a prize because you guys have been so generous to go over and buy some of her things. And so she is offering a $30 choice of anything on her website. So I did the drawing for that from the comments from last time, just like I normally do. And you can go and pick out anything on her website and I will send her your name, but that goes to post number 51, Lori Gray. So congratulations. You get either yarn or a project, whatever is available on Janet's mysableyarns.com website. Um, just as a thank you to the podcast, which I thought was lovely. Very, very nice. And then the episode 114 giveaway for next time is uh, I'm going to give you another prompt so you can respond to the question, what is your favorite season? So are you a warm weather, summer heat person like Phoenix? Are you like all four seasons? Do you like the cold weather? Do you like snow um, or fall or summer heat? You know, favorite season or where you would prefer to live, that kind of thing. That's your um, prompt for this week to comment if you don't have, you know, if you want to have something to say. But you are up for the skein of yarn. This is unique fingering weight yarn. I have a stitch marker uh, that says the right side and the wrong side from Twice Your Cheap. And I have another one of the stitch marker boxes, organizer boxes for you to keep, okay? So that is going out next time. I will draw from the comments down below. I just used the random number generator. I It was like through 104 this time and it picks the numbers and then I just count down so it's very random and I will send out the, the thing. So you can make a comment this week for next week's. Also, I will have two prizes to give away, one on Instagram and one in Ravelry for the sock cow. Okay. Let's do the audiobooks <laughs> very quickly. Mm, this has gone on forever. The first audio book I call a uh, read was called Dark Matter. It is by Blake Crouch. I wouldn't give it very many stars, but there are some of you out there that would love this book. It's quite scientific. It talks about the dimensions and reality and perception. And this man <clears throat> has lived his life as a professor at a small university and someone has taken his work from his early years and developed it into this amazing scientific revolution. 
and they come and they kidnap him and they take him back to the space and he finds out that while he was living his normal life, he was living all these other lives. And he tries to escape to get back to his wife and child, but there are some lives that he was not married. There are some where he didn't know her, where they didn't end. And he finds a woman in this lab and, and they try to go to the, all the various universes to try to, and it's just not my type of book, but I couldn't not read it. And there are some of you that will be like that. It was suspenseful and tricky and very knowledgeable and we, you know, weird, all these different, like, could we at the same time be traveling on different universes and paths? So just want to put it out there that some of you might really like it. Go read the description because I might not do a great job of that one. Um, then I read Winter Solstice by Rosamond Pilcher might be my top book of the year. Definitely so far. Because <laughs> it's the end of January. I love this book. Oh my gosh. It was so good. I should read you the little description because it'll be more efficient then if I try to tell you about it because I'll want to tell you every single part of it. Elfrida Phipps, one of, once of London's stage, moved to the English village of Dibton in hopes of making a new life for herself Gradually, she settled into the comfortable familiarity of village life, shopkeepers knowing her tastes, neighbors calling her by name. Still, she finds herself lonely. Oscar Blundell gave up his life as a musician in order to marry Gloria. They have a beautiful daughter, Francesca, and it is only because of this little girl that Oscar views his sacrifice career as worthwhile. Carrie returns from Austria at the end of an ill-fated affair with a married man to find her mother and sister sharing a home and squabbling endlessly. This is an English familial small town characters that you just grow to love and uh, they go away to Scotland together at these, this group of people and then another person enters the fray and uh, like go read Winter Solstice. It like, came out in 2018, uh, so fantastic. Like I, oh, and the audio was so good. I couldn't stop listening. It was quite long. Um, it was 18 hours. I, so good. Just loved it. Then I read The Gunkle by Stephen Rowley. And The Gunkle is a gay uncle whose sister-in-law dies. And he finds out that the brother his brother has been doing drugs, is kind of addicted to painkillers and stuff and needs to go to treatment in order to take care of these two small remaining children. And so they get, he asks his brother, the gay uncle who has no children and who was a television star who now lives in the desert, kind of as a recluse, if he will take the two children for a while, for 90 days. And the kids are like six and eight. And it's a comedy and it's, lighthearted and it's funny. I didn't love it at the beginning. I was like, I just, oh, I don't know. It's a little stupid. It's He's a little too uh, flippant. Um, I'm not a big fan of people who try to be funny or are funny, but use a ton of like, um, like, uh, okay, I'm going to say this. Do you guys know Al Roker on TV on the morning show where he like turns everything into a joke? He has like a quick comeback. That kind of stuff drives me nuts. I don't know why. I'm sorry. I don't like dislike him as a man. I just, and this gay uncle is that way, like constantly thinking of something funny to say about something. And he, it grows on you. You get better at it. And by halfway through, I could not keep listening because I really did want to know how it was how it was going to turn out. These two little children are full of piss and vinegar and they're confused. Their mother has died and uh, with, after living with a battle with cancer. And, you know, they're now they're going and they love their uncle, but he's not a parent. He's never been a parent. And so, yeah, it, it was it was quite good. I will end up giving it three and a half stars, probably. 
maybe it just started out slow for me. Okay, then I started The Candy House by Jennifer Egan. I really tried, you guys. This is supposed to be one of the best books of the year. I think because it followed Dark Matter, which was very scientific and I didn't love. This one's about a wealthy millionaire computer tech guy who also has like a weird universe thing. I had to give it up. It's supposed to be an amazing book. So I got a DNF for me, did not finish. I may go back to it when I'm in a different frame of mind. I then, started reading The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk, MD. And this is about how your body reacts to trauma in your life. And I have fibromyalgia and there, there are some theories out there that if you have a life-threatening or post-traumatic stress or medical condition, severe medical condition, that you can develop fibromyalgia, that your nerves go on higher alert after having like a crisis in your life. So like after I had C. diff and almost died, I also had previous traumatic experience in my life um, that I may share someday, but not right now. Um, and so I wanted to kind of read about that, but I was, it's hard to read when you've had trauma. <laughs> and so I got part way in and I just gave it up for now. So it's a did not finish, but probably really good for me. But I've done a lot of therapy in my life. I've, I've done a lot of mental health, you know, work and mental health medication. And I'm, I'm in a pretty good place. And so um, I gave it up. I'll just say that. But if, if that rings true for you, the body keeps the score, um, it, it might be worth your while to look at. And then the one I just finished was called Diamond Doris by Doris Payne. And this is a memoir, biography um, about an African-American jewel thief. True story. She stole jewels from all over the world for many, many years back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Um, she knew the police officers and the judges and could get off. She was connected with um, some mob people. Um, she could sell the jewels to anybody. It was fascinating. I was shocked. I didn't love it at first. I thought, oh, I don't know. Do I really want to read a book about someone who literally steals for life and doesn't think that there's anything wrong with it? Um, and her th kind of thought process, especially early on, is that they, the jewelry stores have insurance and they claim it on their insurance and they get the money. It's it was fascinating. Her life story is part of this story. Um, she grew up poor, an abusive family. Um, she is a African American woman, but she's light, so she's almost white passing. Um, but it's fans fascinating how she got away, how she did this. Like she would go into the store in the light of day, dressed as a millionaire heiress woman, and steal five million dollar rings out from underneath them. It, it, it was fascinating. Just like, wow, we have security cameras now and tracking devices. So I, I don't think she could do it now. But she's now, I think she lives in Atlanta and she's in her upper 80s, um, something like that. So I think, I, I didn't go look up her stuff, but I think that's what it said at the end of the book. So anyway, so one, two, three, four, four books read, two given up on. There you go. That's the audiobooks this oh week. Oh my gosh. Did I go over everything? Okay. Lastly, my upcoming teaching schedule. I will be teaching local beginning knitting at the Norwood Library um, in February on Saturdays, three Saturdays. I am going to be hired by Stephen B to teach in March. Um, I haven't nailed down what classes and what dates, but that's coming up. I am going to the Interweave Yarn Fest to teach at Loveland, Colorado, and that is April 12th through the 16th. So if you want to take a trip, that was a lovely event last year. It's at a beautiful conference center. Um, classes are right there on site. It is. It was just really well done. The vendor market was huge. I am teaching Latvian and Vickle braids. I'm teaching basic shawl shapes. How to use Ravelry Like a Pro, 
fixer upper and when knitting goes wrong fixing your mistakes then i'm teaching at the minnesota knitters guild um september 23rd uh that is here in minneapolis i think it's a suburb is plymouth i'm teaching making an owl cowl or cabling without a cable needle and when knitting goes wrong fixing mistakes I have applied to teach at DFW in Texas. So if you're on the board in Texas and you like me, will you give them a little? Because I have applied to teach there for years. I'd really like to teach at that one. That's in September, but I haven't heard back. And Stitches is coming to Minneapolis in August. And I just found out about it and I missed the deadline to apply. So two weeks ago on the last podcast, uh, someone let me know, and the deadline for application for teachers was January 10th. And it's going to be here. I was so bummed because I've applied to teach at Stitches before too and haven't gotten in. So there's a lot of big name teachers that do all the teaching. You guys, the sun is going down and I have to edit this. And it is, well, I, I got up several times, but it's almost two hours long and it takes me twice the amount of time to edit. So it'll be a four hour edit and it is 442. So if I don't eat supper and I don't go to the bathroom, I will have this edited by nine o'clock tonight. And then I have to save it, which can take an hour. And then I have to upload it, which can take an hour or two. So I should shut up and be done. Oh, I hope I covered everything. I think so. I've looked at everything twice, three times. If I didn't, we'll do it next time. Signing off for now. Come in for your hug. Give you big hugs. Give me a big hug back. No green bananas. Waddle on. You'll never regret ripping back. Don't complain with your mouth full. Grace costs you nothing. Keep it colorful. Keep your fork. Buy the gravy. I love you all. Bye. See you in two weeks where I hope I have a little bit of a surprise. I keep saying that, but this time I mean it. <laughs>